Hi guys, in this video I want to talk about is there any difference between modeling a coil winding like this, for example, with a single geometry that represents 10 number of turns, 10 conductors with a single model, or we draw all the conductors one by one and model each wire as a solid coil with just one turn. We will simulate these both simulations and compare their results. The simulation came from one of the examples of the ARM expert and the model derived from created 2D ANSYS Maxwell model. The default model that ARM expert creates for us will model the whole coil with a single geometry so we don't need to change anything in this model except we need to first of all define the mesh of the coils very smaller and more precise so in mesh operation part i will make the mesh of the coils very very small size 0 0.35 millimeter maximum element length and the other difference between these two simulations is we need to model each single conductor for coil and assign excitation using coil option for each one of them. In default simulation, each geometry of the coil contains about 10 conductors. So if we double click on excitation, we can see that, for example, phase A coil has 10 conductors. But in the separated coils, we need to draw 10 different conductors for each coil and assign them as one conductor coil the other difference is we use a stranded type for winding for the default model that models all the conductors as a single coil but in new model we need to make the winding type as a solid and another important point that we need to pay attention to it is in the stranded winding type we need to define the resistance of the coil by ourselves if we for example change the stranded winding resistance to zero it would be a fault and it says that we must define the resistance more than zero because the software doesn't calculate the resistance itself in the stranded type but in the solid winding type we can define the resistance zero because in solid winding the software calculate the resistance itself and we need to pay attention that the calculated resistance of this simulation must be equal to resistance that we defined for the whole winding here. The R1, I calculated the resistance of solid coil and put and put the resistance of the R1 equal to 0 0.5. 125 ohm. So this is all the changes we need to make to compare these two simulations. Now let's see the results of the analysis. We can compare the results like torque, currents, and powers of these two simulations. First, let's see the results of the default simulation. Here we can calculate the average of the torque is equal to 3.96 and let's see the result of 
the other simulation. The average torque is 4.01. Let's compare the currents. Here we have the RMS current for windings as 57.98, 57.25, and 45.62. But in the other simulation, if we see the currents, they are 57.93, 57.23, and 54.60. So the currents are similar to each other and let's compare the powers. In the default simulation we have average power of in the default simulation for the powers we have 1994 for electrical powers and 623 for mechanical powers in this set point. In the simulation that we defined all the conductors, we have powers as we have 2005 as electrical power and 634 mechanical power. Now let's see the differences in a single table. Here I compare the results for simulation A which represents the one geometry for the whole coil and simulation B which represents the modeling each one of the conductors. As you can see if we make a precise mesh and a little step time we can be sure that the results won't have much difference between these two simulations. By considering the errors that finite element method and uh, numerical softwares have, we can consider these two results as the same. I'm glad that you watched this video and if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for the channel. You can also contact me via WhatsApp and this email and let me know if you need any simulation.